is up YouTube back for another episode hope you're all having an amazing day and this is a very special episode now I know I usually say that every time but <laughs> uh, for those of you that follow me on social media you know that I took a poll to see if I should buy the ducktail wing and that is exactly what I did bros check it out oh my god I'm so pumped man so pumped now this is fiberglass as you can see from the inside. What's crazy is if you look at it, it looks like this was like a two-piece thing. So almost like, because you can see almost right through there where they connected, connected together right up through there. And if you actually look like on the sides, you can actually see, it looks really weird. See that? It looks weird. So it's almost like this was two pieces and it connected. I, now I don't know that for sure, but hmm, just how it looks. So, overall first impression of it uh, looks really good. Not a whole lot of flaws. In certain spots, if you look really close, uh, there's a few like little, little indentations and stuff like that. Just 100% normal from the way this thing came out of the mold. You know what I mean? Uh, but you guys know me, I'm not super picky, I'm not like, a lot of the guys out there are just like, oh man, I just, there's little stuff like that everywhere, and it's just like, I mean, who's really gonna come up on your vehicle and be like, bro, mm-mm, that looks terrible, look at that, bro. <laughs> so, that being said, I'm not gonna worry about, you know, trying to bondo any of that stuff, because it's, it's, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, some of the holes are a little funky, for the most part, they all turned out pretty decent uh, especially this one's a little weird right here uh, and this one is a little weird you can almost see the, the little screw or whatever from where they use to keep it in the mold uh, top ones for some reason are like all perfect except for one and check this out you can literally see like a Phillips head screw right there <laughs> where like the mold was on there but I'm not too concerned about that because what I'm going to do is I know I usually have everything set up where I can just really easily take it off in like two seconds, but I don't need to take this thing off. Literally, if I'm going to take it off, I'm going to take off the whole hatch. The only reason why I take this off is if something happens and it breaks, cracks, something falls on it. I mean, I don't, I don't see how that would happen, but... So I'm not worried about using like rib nuts or anything like that to make it like super easy to take off. So I'm just literally going to use regular uh, bolts and then obviously I'll use the uh, locking nuts. But let's check out these. I've used these on a lot of other things. It's just got a little rubber washer on there. And these actually fit down those holes. Look at this. Perfect, bro. Look at that. Couldn't ask for it to be any better than that, man. That's absolutely perfect. It's going to be a perfect seal. Uh, now, I know in some of the things, like I was showing you guys, like that, where you got that screw head sticking out, well, you know what? Doesn't matter, because it fits right over top of perfect. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. So I don't have to worry about modifying any of these holes or anything. I could care less about that, because, again, these are going to fit right over top of it, and you'll never know. And that's how I'll do it. When I actually drill the holes, I'll lay these on here, right like that, and I'll just drill the hole straight through there. Because I don't want to over drill it and then have like a huge gap or, you know, whatever. But, you get what I'm trying to say. So, this being said, let's go ahead and get this thing out there because I want to show you guys exactly how I plan on mounting it. Okay, now I know like the Vicrez, if that's how you pronounce it, it actually mounts to where it comes clear down here like to the edge. This one isn't designed to do that. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So if I were to actually put it all the way down, right there on the edge, got these huge gaps and everything, so you can see. And if you sit like this, look how angled, just like angled like straight down the back. I just don't think that would look good at all. So with that being said, I found that if I just put it right above These quick releases. Let me get the sides set just right. Get the distance right. There we go. Check it out, bros.
I'll be able to keep my quick releases right there where they're at because I was thinking if I put it down there then I'll have to take these off and I have to mount them here and then this might not work right because this rubber band thing would be like you know too angled out but check this out bros gives it a much sharper angle like up in the air and also in the back actually gives it a really big angle because I've actually considered once I get it painted and everything maybe put some kind of thing back here some kind of logo maybe that blue Z guy I don't know who knows who knows just kind of thinking for right now but look at that bros <laughs> that looks so tight oh my god and of course once you put it up like that you can see that it sits so much smoother all the way around like these sides right here will actually fit perfect right there same over here now the only thing is and I've seen other guys that bought these complain uh, like right in here you can see where it comes up and there's like a little weird thing see what I mean how you can tell how it was two pieced together see that like weird thing there and then of course over here I think the sides even a little worse See that little weird thing right there? Now a lot of people were picky about that. I'm like, oh, it looks terrible and this and that and whatever. Race car bros, I care less about that, man. This is going to look amazing. So this is exactly how I'm going to do it, right, right like this. So the only thing different I'm going to have to do, obviously, is the... I'm going to have to, right when I'm ready to mount it, I'll have to push it up just a little bit like that to clear, you know what I'm saying, my quick releases, right like that. Right, like that. Perfect, bros. That is perfect. So as you can see, man, this is gonna look so good, bros. I am so pumped, man. And also love the look of being able to have the quick releases and then just still having the carbon fiber kind of surround the whole piece. Yeah. And being angled way up and then the pitch. Yeah, everything's just perfect, man. So with that being said, if you guys uh, have any ideas for some type of logo and you guys know me I'm not into stickers or you know slapping any kind of logos or anything on there but but this I'd, I'd be down man I was even thinking it'd be cool to uh, put get gapped across the back that would be really cool too but you guys got any ideas throw them down in the comments man I'd love to hear alright so you guys know what's going down now I'm gonna get this thing sanded and under primer so I'm sure you're thinking well why don't you just take it out there now now and do it and then uh, primer afterwards I'd just rather get it primered now let it fully dry then get it out of the car get the holes drilled everything prepped and ready then get it back inside resand paint clear coat that's just just the way I decided to do it uh, so for right now you guys know uh, the style of paint that I use, acrylic enamel. With that being said, you guys know that you can get away with using 320 sandpaper. It makes life a lot easier and it's going to take me like 20 minutes to have this thing sanded and ready. However, if you're not using acrylic enamel, acrylic enamel is super thick and will cover up these scratches. If you're not using acrylic enamel, do not use 320. It's too aggressive. So, What's the white sheet for? Alright bros, so I learned a lesson man, <laughs> sanding, when that dust gets on the carpet, it literally stains it man, so every time what I wouldn't show is afterwards, I could sweep up the majority of it, but about 60% of it stains the carpet and then I have to use carpet cleaner and scrub the floor, and it's actually kind of silly, so. Now for those of you interested in this, uh, I purchased this off of eBay, uh, it was like 190 bucks shipped I believe, and the actual name of it is RB Style Ducktail Wing. Alrighty bros, got this thing sanded. So you can see the mess this leaves, man. <laughs> As you can imagine how bad that would stain the floor. Okay, anyways. So, it's looking good. Looking good. Nice. So, uh, what I do, just so I don't trash my uh, bathtub, 
go ahead and go over this thing with some Windex and just like, you know, just a rag or whatever, just to clean the majority of this, all this stuff off. Now that I've got this thing sanded down, actually I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. See what I mean right there? You can see that line right down through there. That's crazy. Pretty cool. You guys know how it goes from here, man. Get that thing in the shower. Get the Oxy Ultra Deluxe. And get it cleaned up, man. Okay, it's all nice and clean. So while that's drying, let's go ahead and set up the paint booth. What up, bros? It's a new day. Took time out from setting up the paint booth because uh, I'm trying to find the right size bolt I want to use for this. I want to go ahead and get the holes drilled. Uh, so you guys know this is my little test piece. Found the exact bit I need, exact size I need. Fits right in there perfectly. I'm gonna take this washer and this is gonna be real easy bros. I'm just gonna set it on there like that. Hold it in my hands to hold it steady and then just run the drill right down through. And once I actually get it drilled, I'll just kind of waller it out just a little bit. Nice. All right, like that. Get the washer in there. Bolt goes in. Look at that, bros. Perfect. Yes. I just need to take my time and do that. 13 more times, bros. <laughs> Jeez. Just got all the holes drilled. As you can see, everything's looking good. Nice. So whenever I was drilling it, like trying to hold that little washer still if it would slip it a little bit it's really not that big a deal because i just went back over everything and just kind of waller out the holes bigger if it kind of slid or something like that so it's no big deal that washer's big enough to pretty much cover this it fills this entire hole so it doesn't matter if you if you're a little off so you don't have to worry about that so now let me get this mess here cleaned up and you guys are probably wondering what's going on over here bros a 16 track recorder yeah I got something going with that for the channel. Bam! <laughs> All right, so <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna prop this thing up. I can't like hang it, um, just because I think it just hang too low. Because as long as it is, I'm trying to figure this out here. So I th give me a minute. All right, I think I got it, man. So this is just some old speaker. So I think. This should, about the right size up in there, should wedge right down on there, hopefully. Now if I put it too far that way, I might, or that way, maybe like right in the... <laughs> and there we go, bros. Yes! Perfect, man. Perfect. Nice. This will be perfect for like the paint and the clear coat. Oh man, perfect, yes. All right, you guys know the drill at this point, man. Now, the thing about this, this isn't under primer, so I'm not gonna have to worry about using super strong alcohol. So I'm gonna go ahead and use 90%. Some microfiber towels. Get this thing cleaned up, man. Okay, nice and clean. Just let the alcohol evaporate. Now, uh, where I said it was okay to just use the 90, I'll show you guys something here. So the 90 was working in the beginning to really strip the stuff off, but it just didn't stop. It just kept pulling stuff and pulling stuff off. So I had to stop and I went down to 50%. Now we're perfect. Lesson learned, but I wasn't thinking, and that's actually black primer that they put over top of the fiberglass. See, that's the actual fiberglass, and then they primed it black, so that makes perfect sense. So now, it's time to break out the primer. I love using this stuff. It's a lot lighter, so you don't have to do a million coats of paint to cover this up. Probably 
probably the worst day to have done this, man. There's heat warnings out. It's supposed to be 109 degrees here today. I've just opened the doors. It's been maybe a minute and a half, and it's already crazy in here, bros. What up, bros? A new day. Fast forward uh, through the weekend, and this is like Tuesday. Uh, it's way too hot this weekend to do anything, man. Way too hot. But it's like high 70s now, so let's get out here and get to work on this wing, man. This was incredibly difficult to do by myself, trying to position this thing back and forth to get just the right distance right here. So I got some tape holding it on there. Uh, I got the perfect distance, both sides. And then I wanted to get the perfect distance from uh, the quick releases up. So I just found like these little washers just to give a nice little distance like that. So I'm literally ready to drill right now, man. As long as I get the first hole done, then I can get a bolt in it to hold it in place. Uh, it'll be so much easier from there, man. So let's go ahead and start drilling, man. And remember, bros, measure 3,000 times and drill once. <laughs> Last thing you want to do is screw up. So just take your time, man, if you guys are doing the same thing. Okay, so with these bolts just kind of sitting in here, it still wants to kind of shift back and forth. So what I'm gonna do, and so unfortunately I'm gonna have to do this for all this, I'm gonna have to take a Dremel and cut a hole like that, because it's like right over in here. And uh, once I do that, I'll measure the distance again, because like I said, it's gonna shift a little bit back and forth. And then uh, go ahead and get this bolt with a locking nut on it so it's set in position exactly where it needs to be then do the same for the other side and then I know it's set exactly where it needs to be and then I can go ahead and do all the bottom ones. So let me go ahead and cut this out right here with the Dremel. Just got the other side drilled and unfortunately after going through all the bolts I don't have any more so I'm going to have to go to Lowe's and get some more bolts, washers, locking nuts and uh, we'll get back at it bros. This is going to take a while man. So I literally have to it's actually set now. It's not going anywhere, as you can see. So I have to drill the hole, then I have to come up in here and cut a piece out to have access to it. Same over there. So you can imagine how many times I'm gonna have to do that and then up there. <laughs> so for right now, let me go ahead and just get all these drilled and the inside cut out and then we'll go from there. I just can't get over how amazing this looks. <laughs> oh man, that looks so dope. I can't wait to get it painted, man. It's gonna look crazy. So one thing I noticed using a bigger drill bit is it keeps slipping because the clear coat's so slick. So I swapped up and I'm gonna use a smaller drill bit, basically drill like a little pilot hole and then go back over those with the regular dr drill bit. Much better. Now you can see I got the holes like dead even. So now let me go ahead and go back over everything with the bigger drill bit. Alrighty, bros, got all the holes drilled. Slipped a little bit right there, got into that. It's not a big deal. Just sand it down. Same over here. <laughs> the cool thing is I went ahead and drilled through. So you can see all the way across, I'll just need to cut little squares like that. So now I can break out the Dremel and the cutting wheel. Now if you guys have the stock hood, the metal, this is going to be a lot tougher install because I don't know, I don't know how well a little uh, Dremel with a cutting wheel would be on metal. Uh, it's definitely going to be a lot more painstaking I would imagine. So I ran into a little bit of an issue with these side ones, the corner ones. Got all the rest of them in, as you can see. But these side ones here, the bolts I was using were just too short, so they were just barely sticking out here. So I got these super long ones. And as you can see, they're gonna work a lot better. Nice. 
finally, man, all the back is done. Nice, now the paint's taking front part, but it should be a lot easier. Like these back here got real thick, you can see up in there. So prying out with screwdriver and recutting is kind of a nightmare. But up here, it's super thin, so this will be really easy to cut this stuff out. So what I'll do to get these creases out is I'll start right here in the center, drill that one, then work my way over, work my way over, work my way over, clear to the edge. I'll probably have to use longer bolts right here in these side sections too. Not sure yet, we'll see. All right, man, I got a whole front section is done. I don't wanna bore you guys with showing me drill everything, cut the holes exactly like the rear, exactly the same. Uh, and I did end up having to use longer bolts on those front corner sections, so everything is done and ready to go, bros. Hmm. Got some new gravel out here in the lot, man. Where's the Z? Where is the Z? <laughs> it's actually parked across the street over here. Been keeping an eye on it, man. It's hard for me to sleep with it parked over there. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is gonna end up being a uh, two-part thing, cause uh, I'm gonna have to re-sand the wing and then uh, paint it, clear coat it, all that good stuff. I actually had to still get it back off the car. It's going to take forever because there's, what, 14 bolts or something like that. <laughs> it's actually Friday right now. I'd like to paint it this weekend, but it's supposed to be like 90s, and it's just too hot, man. I can't keep the apartment cool enough because the second I open the doors to air out from painting, the hot air comes in. It's just crazy humidity in here, and that just messes with my painting. I don't want to do that, so I'll probably end up wait until later on next week uh but i'm gonna get this video together and put it out tonight so you guys can see what it looks like it's, oh my lord it looks so amazing look at that bros looks so badass from a distance man <laughs> i love it i can't wait to get this thing painted man well some people would probably complain about little things like that you can see a little chip right there and stuff like that but you guys know me race car bros but overall, man, I gotta say the quality of this thing was actually really nice, man. For 190 bucks, dude, you can't beat it. Looks amazing. It's already blazing out there right now, man. Jeez, it's like noon. All right, man, it's gonna wrap this one up, so make sure you guys stay tuned to the next part where I actually get it painted and clear-coated and then back on. Oh, my God, it's gonna look so dope blacked out, man. So that being said, it's gonna wrap this one up, bro. So if you guys like the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, see some more of my content, hit that subscribe button. And make sure you guys hit the bell notification so you can notify my newest content and, uh, hmm. Peace.